Today marks one year since Nintendo released their strange new hybrid console, the Nintendo Switch. It has risen to great success with impressive sales and an ever-growing and increasingly wonderful library of games. I am here to tell you about my experience of the Nintendo Switch. What games do I own, and what do I think of them? I will admit, I began my journey with the Switch with some scepticism. Not of the console itself, I mean just the fact that you can play all those games anywhere I want was an instant sell, but I was worried it would meet the same fate as the Wii U. The price was a bit higher than I was expecting, and it was only launching with one high-profile must-buy game, and guess what? That game was also on the Wii U. But I was worrying about nothing as it turns out. Zelda Breath of the Wild was a system seller, and the Switch has gone on from strength to strength since. I will only be glossing over most of the games I've got, simply because I don't want this video to go on forever, but I'll tell you my thoughts on each one briefly. Despite me getting a pre-order in pretty soonish, I didn't actually get my Switch on launch day. So on that Friday I was sat at home with a Pro Controller, a copy of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but no console to play it on. But that Pro Controller is one of the best controllers I've ever held and I had fun examining it, saw how it looked, how it felt and what the cartridges tasted like. Not good. And I also couldn't believe how big the boxes are compared to the cartridges. Just seems like a waste, they should have had them be a bit smaller like the Vitas. The next day, the Switch arrived in the post and I immediately set it up and booted up the game. I stuck with it on the TV at first because I wanted to see this beautiful game on the big screen and that world they present to you where you can pretty much go anywhere you want, do whatever you want, it's just insane. I ended up spending pretty much all of my free time on it when it first came out until I completed it and it's still the game I've put the most time into on the Switch. I just remember that first time I went to go down to the kitchen and I just picked the tablet out of the dock and walked downstairs with it and that's when I realised this is it, this is how I want all my gaming to be. I always thought the best feature about the Wii U was the off TV play and now this feels like a true evolution of it because you can leave the room with it now. And Zelda Breath of the Wild is a must buy game and any Switch owner should have it in their collection. I have yet to buy the DLC for it because I just know if I go back into that world it will be a long while before I come out again and I've got plenty more to be getting on with. The second game I bought was Snipper Clips. This was a fun little title that you can play in co-op with and you really do have to cooperate with this game because most of the time it can lead to arguments. The next game I got was Snake Pass. This was a very fun game, had some hard to learn controls but it's really satisfying when you get it just right. You have to wrap yourself around stuff to gain height and sometimes you can get yourself into places and wonder, oh how did I get out of this one then? The second retail game I got was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and by this point my physical Switch collection was only Wii U ports which didn't look great but both of these games are worth owning a second time just to be able to have them in handheld and I spent a lot of time on this game across both consoles. My wife and I are frequently online with this one, I'm always Yoshi and she's always Toadette. Um, so look out for us if you're playing online, we're going to be the ones that are up at the front. And we also have a fun time seeing people's strange me designs too, always got to take a screenshot then. The next game I got was a download and it was Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap. Now I absolutely loved the original of this game, I had it on the Game Gear and this is a very faithful remake. Um, it's one of my favourite games ever this is and the only problem with it is I beat it very quickly because I know the game inside and out. So if you haven't played this game before this is the version to get but for me I'm going to have to stick to hard mode. The next few downloads I did was Kamiko, which was a cheap little game but nothing really special. Blaster Master Zero I bought because it had free DLC for a limited time and I thought I'd better buy the game while I can get the extra characters for free. And I've beaten the game, it was fun, I liked it, but I haven't touched any of the DLC characters yet so yeah that was a very weird reason for me to buy the game. 
and I also got Mighty Gunvolt Burst, which is uh, similar to Mega Man, which I'm a big fan of. It combines Gunvolt and Mighty Number no. Nine, and it's a fun little game that one. My third retail game was Arms. Now I wasn't interested in this game when I first saw that trailer, so I thought it just looked like gimmicky motion control crap. But then as more information was dished out and they did a direct on it, I suddenly got more interested in it because the motion controls were optional and I do use mainly the Pro Controller with it. Um, it's something different, it's a unique fighter and it was getting free DLC as time went on and I wanted to be there for that. And I tried the demo, it was really fun. And yes, it is a fun fighting game but it's not really for me, I don't really play these kinds of fighter games that much and I rarely use the mobile motion controls in this one because my left Joy-Con doesn't really work that well um, unless it's in handheld mode. I think that's a problem a lot of people had and I never actually got mine sent back to repair it. Uh, but, but that was resolved a bit later on, I'll explain that soon. But anyway, the next game that came out was Splatoon 2. Now this is an incredible game. I enjoyed the first one on the Wii U but I would have put a lot more time into that if I could have had it all on the gamepad. But now I can have it all off the TV and I can go wherever I want with it as long as I'm within range of my Wi-Fi because mostly it's online. And I'm having a fantastic time with it. I always use the roller. And with Splatoon 2, they also released a pink and green Joy-Con, which I loved those colours anyway for the Joy-Cons. I didn't buy them straight away, I waited a while, but now I've bought them, and now it's not an issue because these both work outside of the handheld mode. This, there's no connection issue so far, which means any times we've been playing multiplayer before, Player 2 has had to use that Joy-Con on its side, but now we don't have to do that anymore, we can use the Joy-Cons properly. Super Bomberman R was a game that came out at launch and I didn't buy it because it had such a high price but then I saw it on sale in a shop and I thought I'm gonna have to have that because it's Bomberman, what more can you say? And it was also the first time I ever brought the Switch over to someone's house, just placed it on the, the table in tabletop mode, handed over a Joy-Con and it was a great feeling, I thought, how versatile this console is. But then August came round, and with that, Sonic Mania did. At the time, I had this game as my favourite Switch game. I was a huge Sonic fan when I was young, and this game just reminded me why. It showed me that it's not just my nostalgia remembering these games being awesome, because this game isn't one I played as a kid. It's similar to them, but this game is awesome. It plays perfectly. I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is one of my favourite games of all time. My brother and I still play the competitive multiplayer and this game has a version of that in. And yeah, this game is just absolutely incredible. The next physical game I got was Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which I thought was a very strange idea to merge them together of all people. But they pulled it off. I mean, I've never been a fan of the Rabbids. I've always thought they were annoying. And I only own one game that features them and I never actually bothered to unlock them in that game. But stick a Luigi hat on one of them and I'm fine with them. I'm not usually very good at these sort of strategy games, so I don't tend to finish them, but I just couldn't keep off this one. It was just so addicting. And that third world boss is one of the most enjoyable bosses I've seen in a long time, in both character and fight. And I'm glad to see there's more DLC coming to this game because I stopped playing it after I beat it and I recently showed it to a friend and that just reminded me how much I love this game, so I'm back on it again now. I bought The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth from a friend. He had the US version and then bought the PAL version because he wanted a complete PAL collection. And so he sold me his American copy. And it's the first time I've ever bought a non-PAL version of a game. I haven't put a whole lot of time into it, but I've heard a lot of great things about this. And from what I have played, I do see what all the fuss is about. And I do need to get into this a lot more. And speaking of games, I need to get into more. Axiom Verge is one that people raved about when it was first released. And I finally bought it when it came to the Switch. And it's a Metroidvania game. I still need to finish it, but I have had a lot of fun with it so far. Then came the Switch game I was most looking forward to. Super Mario Odyssey. A game that takes Mario back to the sandbox and really goes mad with collectibles. I was hooked. I mean, I love collectathons, and this just did not disappoint. 
when I got home from work on the Saturday, the day after it came out, I'd put some time into it on the Friday. But then that Saturday, I started playing it about two o'clock just after lunch. But then the next thing I knew, it was half past ten in the evening. And no game has grabbed me like that in a long time. I mean, not even Breath of the Wild kept me going for that long in one session. I still haven't got every moon, but it will happen one day. Then I will delete my file and start again. The next few eShop games I bought were ones that were on my list for a while, but I was waiting for a sale on them. Um, Ocean Horn, which is pretty fun. Um, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, which I will say right now is more than worth the full price for it. The reason I didn't want to pay full price for it is because I already bought it on the 3DS. If I hadn't done that, I would have paid full price for this. And also Namco Museum, because Pac-Man on the go, you can't go wrong with that. I was glad to see the third-party ports were being well received on the Switch. Skyrim, Doom, Rocket League and L.A. Noire were getting good reviews from what I saw. I decided to support one of these games, so I decided to get Skyrim just to show support, really. Um, I mean, I'd never played Skyrim before because I knew I'm not going to put the time into it it deserves, but if it's in handheld mode, I might just do that. But I played it for about five hours, then I realised I'm not really getting into it. So I sold it to a friend. I mean, it's nothing against the game. I just didn't want to sink 100 plus hours into a game that I wasn't fully into. Poi Explorer Edition. It's a fun little platformer, a bit like Mario 64 and Sunshine. Worth playing if you like 3D collector fonts, but sadly it had some bad timing because it came out around Mario Odyssey's release date, which, yeah, kind of overshadowed it. Cat Quest is a game I downloaded for my wife. Um, I haven't actually played it yet, but she likes it. Super Mario Bros. vs. the arcade version. I remember seeing the arcade cabinet for this in an arcade a few years ago, and I had no idea that there was an arcade version of this game. And I thought, oh, I'm going to beat this in one go, because I know this game like the back of my hand. But I didn't realise it was a harder version of the game, so I didn't beat it. And I will have my vengeance one day. I haven't given the time to play through it all in one go yet, but that is my challenge. Play through every level in one go on this. I will do it one day. Super Meat Boy is a game I owned on the Xbox, but I just had to have a handheld version. And revisiting this indie classic has been a lot of fun. Can't wait for the next one. Oxen Free I bought because it went 75% off. It's a story-based horror game with a great art style. It's a nice one to sit through and experience with someone else. I bought Rocket League when the physical version came out. It's a game I've always been interested in it, but I've never played it. But I am now hooked to this game. I'm getting better at it online, but I hate it when the people on my team act like dogs. Where all they do is go for the ball no matter where it is or where it's heading. Sometimes I've taken shots on target and it's going in, but it gets knocked out of the way by a teammate who just seemed to want to hit the ball for the sake of it. But when you have teammates that actually think and strategize, then it's an insanely fun time. In a recent digital sale, I got Poyo Poyo Tetris, which has Poyo Poyo and, get this, Tetris. Overcooked is one to play co-op, and you really need teamwork in this one. Each level has a setup, and you've got to work out the routine in how to get the three stars in each level, and it's a satisfying feeling when you work it out. And finally, tennis in the face. Because why not? And that was my first year with the Switch, and what a year it was. I mean, there's still plenty of games that I would like but haven't bought yet, like Lego City Undercover, Rayman Legends, Bayonetta, Bayonetta 2, Pokémon Tournament, L.A. Noire, because uh, I'm unable to play those games at the moment because I haven't bought them on the Switch yet. And there's plenty of games I am looking forward to, such as Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Legend of K, Anniversary, Hyrule Warriors... And I cannot wait to finally be able to play those games. Yeah, joking aside, I know there are some actually new games coming that I am looking forward to, such as Kirby Star Allies, Yoshi, Mario Tennis Aces, Bayonetta 3, there's a new Metro Prime and Pokemon game. I did miss a few new games that came out on the Switch, though most notably Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which I am very interested in. But I didn't get it because I still haven't beaten the first one and I haven't even started X. So let's not add another 100 hour plus 
RPG when I've got so much more to get on with. So how was your first year with the Switch? Is it the best thing to ever happen ever? What's your favourite game? What games do you want to come to it? Leave a comment down below and if you like this video give it a like and click that subscribe button to see plenty more videos to come. Here's to a fantastic second year on the Switch.